Do you sometimes get overwhelmed by your emotions? Do you get carried away by the intensity of your feelings? That can have a variety of negative consequences in your communication and relation. This can not save the day, but spoil the day. So don't underestimate. If our emotions are out of control, it can throw our whole life out of balance. Yet, fortunately, there is help. There is a variety of techniques and practices which can help you to find emotional stability. And that grounding can help you to be more solid, to be more clear and focused and give direction to your life intentionally instead of being swept away, carried away by this intensity, by other people's opinions. So it can make the whole difference when you have your North Star, your clarity, your direction, your inner alignment. So we will explore yogic techniques for emotional purification. This will allow us to explore a variety of ways how we can stabilize and ground ourselves. Finding that inner center is the key. If we don't know and don't have ways and techniques to stabilize our emotional clarity, then there is a tendency that we get lost, that the opinions of other people are having an excessively strong impact on ourselves. So how can we do it? Yogic techniques offer a variety of tools and practices which help us to achieve that. Generally, one of the headlines is mindfulness. But not just mindful, but more generally aware. All types of awareness practices which allow us to observe. We develop the ability to step back, to zoom out, see the bigger picture, And in that bird's eye perspective, we can observe how that emotional wave is coming, arising, picking up momentum, peaking, staying for a while, and then declining, fading away, passing. So it is an emotional wave. And it is a very common phenomenon that this wave comes very quickly. So the tendency is that it catches us by surprise. Suddenly, we don't see it coming, and it's like, whoa! And it's not a short build-up. That might happen also in the background, but frequently then it's a trigger point. Somebody presses our button, ah! And then we're like from zero to a hundred and are just like going crazy in no time. So it can be very difficult, actually, to catch that wave. Because it's surprising, it's sudden, it's unexpected. Especially in the interaction with other people. When the communicative flow, suddenly some trigger point, some allergic reaction against this or that. And then oh, we tap into an, what Eckhart Tolle calls a pain body, a negative charge, a conditioning, uh, which we picked up from past relationships and other experiences. And then suddenly this sore spot of us, uh, this inflamed area gets aggravated in no time and it blows up. So then overreaction is a common phenomenon in that um, aggravated trigger point um, overreactivity, blowing things up. So what to do? We practice on a regular daily basis this mindful breath awareness. And generally awareness practices where we notice the principle of things coming, staying for a while and passing. So we get used to that pattern, not only of our emotions and mind, but generally in life. This impermanence, this fleeting nature of all phenomena, experiences, thoughts, feelings, you name it. Everything is coming, staying for a while, passing. The Buddha called that impermanence. Two and a half thousand years ago, he had so much clarity on this simple, foundational, universal truth of impermanence. So this we learn to observe in our breath awareness practices and generally in mindfulness techniques and even more generally speaking in meditative and contemplative practices. 
So I strongly encourage you to pick up a contemplative practice of this or that type. We, for example, share the spiritual heart meditation in which we observe the breath flowing in heart center. And we are witnessing that phenomenon of rising and falling of the breath. We cultivate that neutrality. We allow ourselves to take the neutral observing position of simply witnessing whatever is happening. Then we can notice the quality of the breath. Is it today very soft and gentle or tight, contracted, constricted? Uh -huh. In a non-judgmental way, we are simply observing. And we avoid the reactivity and we still observe possible emotional charges. Ah, I don't like it. I think it's not good that my breath is so tight and constricted. I would love if I could breathe more deeply and freely, softly. Sure, nice, good intention. But observe also not just your breath, but observe your inner dialogue, monologue, talking to yourself, the mind having its commentary. Observe also that. So we learn to witness the quality of physical topics in our surroundings and inner body, but also we learn to observe emotions and thoughts arising. They stay for a while and pass. But what does that tell us? We are not just our emotions. There is an emotion arising. I can observe it coming and going. So I am not just my emotion. That's a pretty radical discovery if you take it serious and carry through with it all the way. In any case, even on a basic level, it gives you a freedom. Because usually in the emotional charge, we get overwhelmed and carried away. And we're somewhat of a victim of our own emotional charges or the negativity which other people are projecting onto us. But the emotional freedom comes when we can see it as just another object in our awareness, which is coming and passing. And it's not me. I am not my anger. There is an angry emotion arising. There's a surprising, liberating freedom in that, if you can experience it. So that the most important approach. We practice non-reactivity. There is something arising. Somebody presses our button, but we don't react. Seems impossible? No, it is possible. With clarity, determination. With that commitment, lucidity. And of course, with practice and maturity, these things become more and more second nature. And still, regularly we fail, but more often than not, We have the freedom to step back, take a deep breath. <sighs> Long exhale, sighing it out to release the contraction tightness of the emotional trigger. <sighs> And to be on the safe side, we take another deep breath. <sighs> Softening, relaxing. In a way, the attitude give me a break, let me take a breath first before I give, come with an answer. And then I, in a way, reflect and come up with the appropriate answer, the wise response, instead of the instant reactivity. Somebody presses my button, and I freak out. That's not re usually very beneficial. So that comes with practice and with clarity, lucidity, discernment. And this you get from life experience, from formal practices, and from yogic wisdom, as you can receive it in advanced courses, retreats. We share a lot of that in our 200-hour yoga teacher training, in our meditation teacher training. We go even deeper into those topics. Find yourself a spiritual master who can really take you by the hand and guide you to those profound levels of inner freedom, which has so much potential, so much beauty, you don't see it coming, but it leads to a lot of release and emotional purification in the background. So you do not need to figure out how to deal with my anger, how to feel, figure out the 
problem here which causes this sadness and then I had a tr another trauma over there which causes another sadness and another form of anger and then I'm upset and then I'm here in the victim role and then this emotion and that emotion and if we try like in a mechanical engineering way to like fix this problem and do some psychoanalysis for that problem and try to figure out that issue and then I have that micro trauma and then my parents were always telling me this and that teacher was negative and I got that conditioning from the media and my friend was always very list and that where are we going to go with this it's going to be a lifetime job and once you have cleared three of those problems you picked up another two or seven on the way with other people you meet, your boss setting yourself a deadline, and then it's like, ah. And uh, life is full of those triggers. So don't try to figure it all out with the mind, understanding, explaining, what's the reason she said this, and let me try to figure it out. Let me think about it more. That's usually a vicious cycle a downward spiral pulling you into some depression and yes then the sun is shining again and you're back into the manic uh, high but then it's manic depressions which torture my soul as the notorious Jimi Hendrix already knew decades ago so human beings have been through these cycles not only for decades and centuries but for millennia and the main recommendation is actually the non-reactivity that does not mean that you are completely cold, ignorant, aloof, arrogant. No, this yogic form of detachment is a very compassionate, engaged, embodied form of awareness which feels and sees things clearly but doesn't get overwhelmed and carried away. Because while embracing the problem and the issue of the situation in a heartfelt, compassionate way of loving kindness, still there is a very solid, clear, detached, neutral observer which can witness the charge of that feeling emotion phenomenon and does not get carried away. So that requires practice, yes, <coughs> but once you have the practice under your belt, step by step, you will experience the benefits, the liberty of not being a victim of our emotions anymore. So that is the invitation and I encourage you to take that serious and I invite you to explore the profound potential to go beyond the common narrative of taking our emotions all too personal because this is usually the problem. We take things personal. And then it's a whole drama. And then mutual drama and the emotional charges in the communication and relation, they just amplify each other. And frequently we tend to live in an uh, emotional war zone of various conflicts happening at the same time with different people. And it can be quite heavy. So there's a lot at stake. And I strongly encourage you to take responsibility for your state of consciousness. And I'm curious how the benefits in your journey will unfold. So please be in touch. In our yogic global community, we have thousands of people connecting in our online yoga teacher trainings, sharing in this interactive family and exploring these obstacles and solutions to the problems together. So I invite you to dive deeper. At least subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out some of the eye-opening and possibly life-changing insights that we are sharing here. I'm sending you lots of life-loving wishes from the Paradise Island Bali and I see you very soon. Oh.